Hi, everyone, and welcome to this month's uh, Edmonton R User Group Meetup. Um, I'm really glad that more and more people are joining us now. However, the weather outside is really nice, so there is really no reason to sit in front of a screen. But this topic that we are going to hear about today is probably so interesting that you're sacrificing this nice weather and staying inside. So. It's my pleasure to introduce Ronnie Hernandez, who is uh, right now doing a sabbatical from work, studying at the University of Alberta. Otherwise, he's a, a data professional using R for his everyday job. And uh, he'll give a bit more intro about himself. And the topic for today is going to be how to create websites for scientific and technical communication with Distill our package. And he's also going to introduce how to host this for free on GitHub and how to automatically build everything when you make changes. So this is really an exciting topic. And I know that a couple of people who can be here today are interested. So that's why we are recording this. And I also have to leave for a family commitment, but I'm going to be really keen to watch the replay. So for those of you who can stick around, I wish all the best and uh, well, enjoy. Thanks Ronnie again for doing this today and uh, it's all yours. Okay, thank you Peter for the invitation. So, hi everyone. Um, so we are going to talk about creating a website for scientific and technical communication. It also doesn't have to be like scientific or technical. It can be a good way to create your own blog. So, uh, at first, let me introduce myself a little bit. I'm from Costa Rica. Uh, I have been working in data science industry for about five years, but currently I'm doing a, a master's at the University of Alberta. That's why I'm here in Edmonton. I am an R Studio certified tra trainer. And in my free time, I like road cycling, reading beers and coffee. So um, one more thing. Uh, we have uh, several contacts for the Edmonton R user group. So probably you already know the meetup page, but we have one, um, one web page for, for, for the group and we have one uh, site on GitHub where you can find some repositories and we have meetings every month. So pay attention to the meetup or the website or Peter, contact if you want to propose a talk or you have questions or want to do something else with the Edmonton R user group. Okay, so what are we going to learn today? So we want to build an static website with the distill R package. So I have some examples over here that I'm going to show you of what are we basically going to build. Distill is a package that is going to use R markdown files to create HTML files and bundle everything in a way that GitHub can render a web page. So if you want to check these examples, I'm going to send you this through the chat. Just wait for a moment. So this to everyone. Yep. And you can check some, some examples of web pages over there. For example, the RStudio Artificial Intelligence block, it is built on, on these still web pages. These have the, the appearance of a block, uh, but you can have two options like a website. Let me check if there is one that can look like a website instead of a block. And this is more of a, a block. You can see that you have page. It doesn't have like every block post over there and we are going to build today today a website like this one okay let me go back to my presentation so some basics about web pages i'm not going to use the technical uh, names or references for web development i'm just going to use some analogies so what is the meaning of a static website we have two types of websites. We have a static 
and we have dynamic websites. A dynamic website, it means that when a user is in the website, the content can change according to the inputs, the clicks and the information that we put in the, in the website. So it is going to change. For example, it can be an API when you go to your bank account and you do transfers and that kind of stuff. I'm going to mute somebody in there. Okay, that's it. And other example is stores with um, online shopping where the web page is reacting to the input that you are giving to, to that web page. The people who create these web pages need more tools to build this kind of stuff like databases and databases and other kind of stuff. Static websites are sites that basically just render information. I mean, the user that goes to a web page like this one, they will see just information and they will be able to read that information. And that's it. There is no option to give inputs to save information or things like that. Compared to dynamic websites, these are easier to build. Okay. So in order to make our website to become alive, we need basically three things. We need the hosting. What is the hosting? Let's think about and a store that is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Why? Because they are providing us a service. They are always open. They are always giving us uh, something. In this case, our hosting is another computer that is going to be running and it is going to be serving us the information that we have in our website. Then we need the routing. Uh, this is going to be like an address from all the places on the internet, we need that the users can find our website. So there is going to be the URL, the www.com.org, that kind of stuff. So that way, users will be able to find and retrieve the content. And also, we need the content that is going to be deployed for the web page. Now, with this deal and GitHub, we are going to be able to have all these elements in some relative easy steps. We are not going to configure a server. We are not going to configure the, the DNS we don't even have to think about it. We are just going to create a repository on GitHub. GitHub is going to, to create the URL and we are going to create the content with the distill package. So if you are already our users and you already know how to work with our markdown files, um, we can basically use that same workflow, just put some other files over there, send that to GitHub, and GitHub is going to build our web page. Okay, I'm going to give you an uh, introduction to the distilled package and the important points that you need to take into account to build your web page. So, as I showed you before, you have two types of, of sites. You have a blog style site and you have a website. Um, the workflow is going to be the same. You can change, you can have some tweaks over there, but it doesn't matter. So um, you, you, you can get more information about this on documentation that I'm going to send you through the chat or I'm going to put in the, in the, in the repository that I'm going to share with you. Um, but they have almost the same elements. So I want you to focus on these elements. When we create an RStudio project with the files from this still, we are going to have this file that is a YAML file 
And in this file, we are going to put all our configuration in general for the website. Because we are going to build our site with GitHub, we need to put this file. It is empty, it is just name. It is going to be taken by one of the processes of GitHub because GitHub, the standard or the default behavior of GitHub pages is to build static websites with other technologies, like for example, no Jekyll. In this case, we are building our site with this still is different from Jekyll. So we need to indicate that we don't want Jekyll. So we need to create this file. So this is an artifact. And we are going to have our R Markdown files. They are going to have our content. And also this still will create a folder that is going to be called docs. And inside docs, all the render files from the R Markdown files, the HTML files, are going to be saved in here. Why? Because GitHub, GitHub is not going to care about all these files that are outside the docs file. GitHub is going to check this docs folder and it's going to say, okay, so all the content that is in there, it is the content that is going to build the web page that a user will be able to check. So the site YAML for configuration, no Jekyll, because we are creating our website with this deal. The R Markdown files, it is going to be our normal and usual R Markdown files that we can work with. And a docs file that we don't even have to take care about this one because this still is going to be in charge of this. So how do we shoot a start? First on GitHub. On GitHub, um, we are going to create a repository and in that repository, this is uh, the normal steps. We are going to put a name in there, a description that is going to be on the readme. If you don't have a, I think that this is still the case nowadays, but I think that if you don't have a pro account on GitHub, you need to have your repository as, as public in order to create a web page or to use GitHub pages. If you are students at the university, you can create a GitHub account with your normal email, but you can also add your um, university email. GitHub is going to verify that you are a student, just that you have the domain of the university, and it's going to give you a pro account. That's what I did. So we can then select a readme. We can create a git ignore file just to ignore some files that we don't want to control version in there. And I usually, for educational materials and that kind of stuff, I use a Creative Common, Commons license. So anyone can use all the material over there and reuse it, teach with those materials, change it and whatever. So everyone can do this and create a repository. Then we will go to settings. But for this step, I'm going to do it at the end. So I'm going to repeat those steps on real life. I will go. Oh, sorry. I'm going to I'm going to delete this ripple just to start over again. Yeah, delete this one. So you can see all the process. Now this is not working. I don't know why. Continue. Server error. Okay, let me check. I'm going to create a new repository. I'm going to use 
let me check if I have the name Edmonton uh, our user group and this is the this still talk okay still exists so I'm going to change the Edmonton our user group I'm going to use Jake uh, side for materials this still talk that's it public we're going to add a readme file and then with the template because we are going to use r i'm going to select r in here the license is going to be a creative commons so i'm going to share this repository with all of you later so with a creative commons basically you can reuse all the materials in here and create repository now that we have the repository i'm going to clone this um, and now I think that I have it. I'm going to open our studio. So I already cloned, so I, I am connected, let's say it that way, to the repository that is on GitHub. What I'm going to do is a new project version control. Don't, don't worry about the other one. Yeah. And I'm going to browse documents, repositories. And... No, just I'm going to do it everything inside R Studio. So what I did was to clone that repository. I'm going to erase that. I'm not going to do anything from, from the terminal. I'm going to create everything from within RStudio. So if you have the GitHub repository, you can copy this. You can open RStudio. And if you already have Git installed on your computer, you can paste the URL over here. It's going to autocomplete the project directory name. It is going to create a folder under my desktop folder. So create project. And now we have a normal R Studio project over here. So we can check in the right upper corner that we have the name of, of the project over there. And we have the readme that we created. We selected the option on GitHub, the license that we also select, select, select on GitHub and the git ignore. So now that we have all those files, we still don't have anything about this still. So how can we start? I'm going. If you don't have the package installed, you can use install.packages and the name of the package is this still, right? I already have it, so I don't need it. And I'm going to say it, this still. And what is the first step? The first step is to create, uh, let me check, create website. You can do it by hand, but I don't want to. I can use the templates that I already have with, with the package. So the directory, I want to create all the template files in here. So this is going to give me a couple of R&D files, the no Jekyll and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to say uh, get working directory because I want to create the files inside this folder. The title, the title for this, uh, I'm just going to leave it on Jack. I think that these have to be under quotes. And then the other argument in that function is going to be GitHub pages. And this is a Boolean, so I'm going to say true. Why? Because if I don't do this, I will have to create by hand the no Jekyll file. It's, it's going to create a folder that is called site. And I want to create that folder as docs because GitHub is going to look for the docs folder. So I want that this still take into account that I'm using GitHub for rendering the website. So with this, you will see that it will create some files. It's going to work. And now we have, remember that I told you, the two R&D files the docs folder and the site YAML. I told you that this was going to create a 
no Jekyll file. Well, it is in here. So now we have all the templates for the site. So I can render this site. If uh, I don't see it, if you are inside a distilled project that is a website, it should appear here a tab that says build. But I think that because I created this way, it's not opening that one. So I'm going to close my R Studio just to reload the session. And now we have the tab build. So this is the basic template. I already have a website on my computer. I'm going to say build website, and this is going to render those basic template files. So I have the default things over here. It's kind of empty, and we are going to start changing this kind of stuff. How can we work on these files? You will see that we have the index RMD and the about RMD. I'm going to create a new file. And to create a new file, you, you can create a new armor.dom file, but it's not going to have this header, the, the one that is used for these still documents that are RMD and you need a little bit of configuration. So I'm going to use the defaults. And this is going to be create article. This is going to ask me for a name. I'm going to call this test because we just want to test if this is working. And now we have a new armor down file. So you will see we have three files about index and the new one that is test. If I go over here and I say build, build website. I still cannot see the test new file that I have. And why this is happening is because we have one configuration file for all my website. This configuration file is the one that is going to tie everything together and it is going to organize and give us also some uh, aesthetics of the site. If you pay attention to this section, it says navbar, that is the upper part of my website, and it just has the home and the about. Uh, I'm going to build a website so you can see that, because this is the, the, the basic logic of a website. So you will see we have home and we have home over here, right? We have this home and we have this home. We have the about, and we have the about over here. So if I clean this and I just click into the about, it is rendering some content in here that says about this site. But where that com content comes from, if we go to docs, to the docs folder, you can see over here that you have the about and the index HTML. We have also the test HTML. Why? Because when I use this functionality inside RStudio, it is going to take all the files that have the R Markdown extension and it is going to render all of them as an HTML and it is going to save them inside the docs folder. So at this point, how can I do? What can I do to show that content over here? We are going to change the configuration in the, in the YAML. So what I can do over here is just to copy and paste this because I'm kind of lazy. And the text is what the user is going to see. Test. That is just normal characters that is going to be rendered on the site. A name, you can put whatever you want over there. But in the reference, you need to put exactly the name of the file over here. So you have test dot html save i already save my site jaml file that is the configuration i'm going to say build website and i have it over here and you can see that we have a new tab test when you are working with this still remember to include the names and the reference of your new files in the jaml file because it happened to me the first times that I was creating new content and I 
it didn't show up and I was like, what is happening? It was because I forgot to put it over here in the YAML uh, configuration file. Now that we have this configuration file, um, I'm going to add some content to the, I'm going to create a, a, a new file. This is so we can, I'm going to leave the test file like that and I'm going to create a new one so we can play around a little bit. And this new article is going to be called Iris, the default data set that comes with some of the packages in R, Iris. So we have this one over here. I'm going to erase this, I don't need it, right? And I'm going to start recreating my normal workflow. Like for example, I'm going to put all the libraries in here, library deploy R, let's say that we want to, to plot uh, something. So we are going to use ggplot and yeah, that's basically everything. So we are going to say iris um, exploration, something like that. And we are going to create a new. So if we check the iris data set, we have a data set already loaded in here. And so I'm going to use Iris. Oh yeah, I remember other library in here that I need because I don't like I don't like the names of the of the file. If we check this, if I do Iris uh, and a glimpse of the data file, you will see that it has these capital letters and a point. I don't like that kind of stuff. So I'm going to say clean names and just to check. If I'm sorry, clean names, this was out the parentheses. Now that I have that, I have the sepal M, I just changed names. And that was just for checking that. Let's create a plot aesthetics. And you see that you can go along with your exploratory data analysis, you can create your, your plots and everything. Let's create something here like beta with th and then we are going to include the petal length and we are going to say um geom point right geom point And now we have our plot over there. I'm going to save this. And remember, when this is going to render the, the file, it is going to take the name that we put it in here. I put a really ugly name. So I'm going to change this, the first. I don't want any capital letter in there. Iris RND, this is going to be iris.html. And so in here, I'm going to paste a new section, a new tab that is going to show to the users my new file. So in here, I'm going to put iris, that's it. And the output is going to be iris, everything in lowercase, like in here, save. And here we are going to say build website Now we have a new tab over here and we have this with a plot over there. So we are going to change step by step things in our documents because they still have some really cool options. Um, before that, I'm going to explain you one thing. When we click this build website, this still is going to copy and paste all the files that are outside here that are not R scripts or R markdown scripts. But if you have a CSV file, if you have your data over there, and you don't want to send that to GitHub and you don't want to send, you don't need to send that into the docs folder. Um, 
you need to include something. So what we need over here is just the HTML files, this search JSON file. You don't have to worry about what is in here. Just recognize uh, some of the extensions. But for example, let's say that we have a CSV, a CSV file that we are reading. Uh, let's say that we want to uh, export this because this we always have data files over there. Oh, I need uh, one library in here. Uh, I need library. I'm going to use read R, and I'm going to use uh, this one for later. But I'm going to use plotly later. And so what I'm going to do in here is to write CSV that file, and this is going to be irisclean.csv. I'm just creating a test file, right? A CSV file. So you will see that I have this one over here. I'm going to change a little bit of this. I'm going to create a new title in my CSV, and this is going to be import data. I have a new chunk, and this is going to be I read clean, and this is going to read the CSV that is called Iris uh, Clean CSV. After that, I want to create. I don't need this, right? So our normal workflow when we are working with R is that we always import one CSV file or a data file, a feather, whatever extension you have over there. And then you start exploring your data or doing your data analysis, your statistics or everything. Let me check if this works before rendering the site. And it is working. So let's check again my docs. I You saw that the web page was rendered with just these files, it doesn't need the CSV file. So if I do the build website, I'm going to save the changes that I just did. Now I have, everything is exactly the same that we did before. But what happened right now is that they still copy and paste the iris clean CSV file in here. If I don't want to share my data files on GitHub because it is not the site, and if you want to share data, you do other things, not like this. You need to change something on your general configuration file that is the site.jaml. So in here, I'm going to say on this, exclude. What is this going to exclude? It is going to ignore uh everything that has the csv extension just that i'm going to erase this from the docs because that's something that i don't want in there and i'm going to say build website and now i have everything the same iris all the plot but if i go over here now we need rebuild the site it is not copy and pasting that csv file into my docs so that's one behavior that we want to control the files that we don't want to put in docs file we should exclude them in the general jaml file okay let's try something else in here so let's say that we finish our data analysis and uh, let's and we want to make that uh, that plot a little bit nicer. Oh, that's one error that happens to me all this all the time when I'm using deployer. Team, let's use the, the light team and probably before here is scale color. But it is, this is discrete, that's what the D means. And I need one plus more in here. Now I just change the appearance. But this is an static plot, let's say, because this is going to be my website. I want that the users can play around a little bit with my plots. So that's where Plotly comes handy. Plotly is a library built over a JavaScript library. So it can give you a little bit of interaction 
interactivity. So I'm going to say this is plot. This is the, the name. I'm going to rerun this as an object. And now we can say it was gg plotly. I want to convert this. And if I run this, now I have this plot. So if you see, we have now a mouse over and you can zoom some sections of the plot. And now let's try if this works on my website. So if we go to Iris, now we have the same behavior over here. Okay. Let me check if I'm. Okay. Um, now, if we are working with a site that is for scientific communication, probably we also want to include references over there. And so, we can include text and create something that people can use and look up to other references in the API style. How can we do that? The first thing is that this still can use the, I need to copy and paste some other things over here. So I'm going to open a second window because if not, it's going to take all the time for me. Okay. If you use Sotero, Mendeley, or these references managers, you can export the bib text reference and you can include that in a text. Um, let me check. Just to put some text over there, putting it soon. Let's copy this just to create some not content. And let's say that in here, we are just developing our idea. And we need a reference for this text. We don't want to do that by hand. We want to automate a little bit that thing. So what I'm going to do is if I go to Sotero and I have all my references in here, I can right click on, I can export everything. I'm not going to do it with everything. I'm just going to select one, but the exercise will be the same. And I'm going to say export item the big text, and this is going to be export notes. If you are on a Windows machine, try to always check that this is on UTF-8 because Windows have an encoding that is kind of special. So um, other computers work regularly with UTF-8. So if you don't want to have those problems, try to select always this one. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to say that this is my references and you will see the the extension of this bit i'm going to put it this is my folder and now we have in our project we have the references i'm going to include this one but i have to do it inside the 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 jamo so what can I do? I'm going to include here the bibliograph points. And this is going to be the name that we put to the file was reference references dot bib. Like that. I'm going to open that file. So this is a bib text file. This is the interchangeable file between those references managers, you will see that I have over here all the information that I had on Sotero. We need the identifier because this file can be longer and it can have like many more references in there. So we need to distinguish between them. So you will try to check when it says at article, and then this is the name of the reference. In here, I'm calling all the information that is inside this file. But now on my text, 
I need to indicate that this, this text, for example, has this reference. So I'm going to do it opening square brackets and I need to put the reference Rogers. What was the name? Response 2020 or 2020 response? Response 2020. Response 2020. And I think that this is it. So let's build our website so you can check. Let's see if we have some errors and we have some errors. Let me check why we have this. Founding resource path. What is the name? Ah, oh, I can see it. So how can I check where comes the error from? Because I just changed two things. I changed the YAML and I changed this, and I am not sure which one of those two changes caused the error. So if I check over here, it says, this is not found. Ah, okay, so it is in my YAML. And if I check the name, I just confuse the end. This one goes here and hopefully this fix the error. And now we have it. So let's go to Iris to that section. And you will see that in here we have the reference. And if we and, and now we have even a mouse over, so a user will be able to watch this. And also we have the complete reference in the in the bottom of the page now if we have content and somebody comes to our site and that person wants to make the reference to our site we can change all this so you will change that with your name and everything that you have in there uh, i'm going to copy and paste this just be a little bit faster with the examples and you can put the URL, even if it is, if this information comes from a publication that you have, you can reference that by this number. So I'm going to build this website right now. Again, just to check step-by-step step all the changes that we are doing in just one site. So I have this and if you check in the bottom of the page, we have, all the reference that we are going to use and also the option for a user to cite our web page. You can also add some site notes because if you see the default configuration of this site is kind of narrow. So you have a space over here to put some site notes if you need to explain something else on your site and you can do it for example if we put it over here you can say uh, it was sign and then this is going to be like this is a note and then we are going to close this site safe and let's check if this work And now here in Iris, we have a note on the side. You have many options. You have to be very careful with this first section because we have a YAML file that is the general configuration for the site, but for each one of our R Markdown files, we have a mini YAML section and if you change like the indentation, you can break things and you can pull all your hair, your hair out of your head when you cannot see where is the indentation over there. So pay attention to the indentation, pay attention to the distilled documentation so, so you can avoid those, those errors. So we have the plotly, the references, and let's say, 
that now that we have oversight in the index, that is the home page, is quite empty and we want to add images. So besides the plot images that we have over there, over there, we want to include uh, images, pictures, things like that, we can do it. If you already work with R Markdown, probably you are used to this way to add images. I'm going to, no, I have it. I have this open over here. I have two images that I'm going to uh, put in the, in here, I'm going to create a new folder, images, and inside that folder, I'm going to put those two images. So if I go back to our studio, I have my folder over here inside my project. So I want to add one image. So I'm going to say, where is that image? It is in images and I have this one over there. And now I have it. What happens when I try to insert one image in that way? It is going to show this, but because this is my technical communication site, I want to have a reference also for my, for my image. So I don't want this behavior. I'm going to change that and I'm going to use a chunk and I'm going to include some images in there. Need, I'm going to call the package need R and this is going to be include graphics and this is inside images, right? And I'm going to use a second image in there. Now, what is the cool thing about using the, the, the chunk is that we can use the fig caption to include a title. So um, this will be Santa Rosa National Park from Tower, ah, something like that, just for the example. And if I build a website, let's check what is the change with this. So we have both images in here, but now the second images, the one that we use we, inside the chunk of code, it has the figure caption and it is going to enumerate all the figures that you have over there. So you don't have to worry about counting your images and changing manually if you are developing your, your, your research communication. You can do this with, with the plots, for example, with this one, with the chunk over here, you, you can use the fake caption, the, the, the same, and this is uh, iris, relation, beta, uh, whatever you need to explain over there. And I will create that change inside that figure too. Okay, so now we have practically the options inside one RMD file. Now let's say that we want to change a little bit the appearance of our website because we don't like uh, these tabs that are just lineal. Let's say that we want to change a little bit of the nav bar. We have just the jack over here, that's kind of boring. Let's say that I'm thinking about using just one option in here, like a drop down menu where we can include the test and the iris documentation. And we want to add some logos to our site. So we are going to make those changes. First, we are going to start with changing this nav bar. What is the nav bar? If we go over here, we can see the order of this jamu. We have nav bar. Everything is on the right side, right? We have text, h reference text, h reference, and so on and so forth. What I'm going to do over here is that uh, below the last one, this is the about HTML. And in here, I'm going to add text because this is the pattern, right? We always start with the text and then the reference. But in here, I'm going to do text. And let's say that this is the section for my exploratory data analysis. And I have test and iris under there. So the next thing, thing that I'm going to do it is I'm going to declare this as a menu. 
So you will see you have text. Now we indicate that this is a menu and under this menu, we can leave everything what we had before in here, but we need just to create a little bit of indentation. So we need to move this till here. I think that is okay. And let's save this, the, the file. Let's build a website. Let's hope that there is no errors in there. Now you can see that the nav bar is changed. Now we have Eda, and under that, we have the drop down menu. Now, because I'm going to host everything on GitHub, I want to give the option to the users that come to my website to redirect themselves to the source code to my GitHub repository. What can I do over here? Um, in the documentation, you can check how many um, icons do you have. Um, in here, I don't remember how many spaces. This is under the nav bar, under the right side. Yep. In here. So I'm going to say that I want to add an icon. And this icon, how can I know? options of icons i can come over here and this is uh font was five font font awesome no i use font awesome for some icons there are some icons that you have to pay and there are some icons that you can use for free so if i select over here for free you will see that you have this many variations of github and also some symbols of git so if I want to use GitHub, you will see that you have the option over here for HTML, React, Vue.js. You're going to use the HTML. So the name is uh, GitHub. I'm just going to copy that one. I'm going to write it. But if you don't want to write everything, um, this is fab. And we are going to write it like GitHub. If you use another site, I don't remember. You have to change the fab um because it will source the icon from from other place in this case I'm, in this case because it is from font awesome i'm going to leave it like that and i want a reference for this and the reference for this i'm going to copy and paste the the url of my github repository save Build website. Let's check if this is going to work. And now I have my GitHub icon over here. If I click in there, it is going to redirect me to my uh, repository. Okay, let's change a couple of things more. Um, also, remember that I choose a Creative Commons license for my GitHub repository, but not all the users will go to my repository. Probably they are just going to check my website. So if I want to make clear that this site is used in Creative Commons, we can include in the, in the YAML file the license. How can we do this? I'm going to say Creative Commons points and this is going to be and you can put the the terms of the license that you are using now if we check some web pages we can see that web pages have like this favicon over here we can change that to in our website those are like tiny details but we can change change that kind of stuff um how we can change this. We need to download the, 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 the icon. I don't remember icons. icons uh, yeah, this page have many icons. So you can check over here. I know let's put like rocket or something like that of deployment. Uh, let's check what it says. Download PNG. 
I'm going to download this one. I'm going to put it on my images. Oh, I save it with the wrong name. Images, rename. I need to specify this. And I'm going to use another one that I already had before. So I have here in images, Falcon. I'm going to put this. You will see that the extension is ICO. Now let me check the page where I downloaded that one. Okay, this is another web page where you can download uh, that kind of favicon. So now that we have in our repository that favicon, we can include it and we have to specify that in our, in our YAML file. So what are we going to say? We are going to say that favicon is going to be equal to what? To our favicon save, and also in our nav bar, I'm going to render this so you can check the difference because we have a PNG, a small picture over there, and we have if I open this in my browser, uh, take this. I don't know why it's not opening. When we render this side, we will see, we, we will be able to, to check that icon. And if we want to include, I'm going to copy and paste this because that bar is getting a little bit late. Now we have a logo and it is going to be on the nav bar. This one is called um, logo.png. Let's build the website again. And now we have the little rocket over here. And we, when we deploy this site, we will be able to see the, the, the favicon on the tab in our browser. So far, we have changes in our website of elements, including elements, references, images, and that kind of stuff. If we want to change now the fonts color, the fonts size, and other aspects, we need to include some CSS. And how can we do that? I don't want to create a CSS file on my own. So I have the option from this still to create one. And it is what it was the still create theme. And I'm going to call this one styles. Styles. And now you see over here that I have a styles.css file. In here we can change uh, colors and everything, you will see that you have main font sizes. So you can change the font size of your titles or the text in the body of your, of your documents, the, the code size font, and so on and so forth, the colors. And so you will see sections in this, in this file. This is indentation sensitive. So try to not mess up a lot this file. If you mess it up, you can just erase and create a new one and start over again. But um, we're going to change this. You will see that you have the option to use the hex color. What I use on Linux to find the colors, it is the GPIC. So you will see that with my mouse over, if I go over the icon of RStudio, I have the hex color over there. 75 double A D V. So I'm going to change the title colors to that one. Now that I found what is the color? There probably there are other programs with that. 75 double A D V. So this is the title colors. If I do the build side, this is not going to work. 
Why? Because we just created the style CSS. So now we need to include this one in our general configuration file. How are we going to configure this? We are going to say in here the theme, I don't remember if it was with an S, no, nope. it is like this. The name of the file is tiles.css like this and like this. This is in the same name, build website. And now you can see that for the titles in our documents, this is going to change. One more tip, just before rendering this site on GitHub, it is that you can change the fonts and you can import the, the, the fonts with, uh, with Google. So if we go here, we can say Google fonts. I'm going to share all these links with you later. You can import this kind of stuff. So for example, if I go to Inconsolata, that is Inconsolata, this is one of my favorite fonts. You can select from these options that you have over here. Let's say that I want the second option. And this second option, remove all. If I select this one, you will see over here that we have this option of import. So we are going to copy import up to this comma, and I'm going to put it over here. You will see that it says option on embed, embed custom fonts here with import. That's what we paste. And now we have it there. Okay. The name of this font is the family in Consolata. But if we check over here, that it says specify custom fonts, the heading and other ones, it has another one. So I want to use this all over my place. I'm going to copy and paste this. Save. And let's check the change. And now you see that the fonts of the letter has changed. Now this is just on my computer. So now how can make this site alive for all uh, users? I'm going to my terminal. I'm going to say git status. I'm going to say this through git. Um, I'm going to send everything in there. Um, this is a bad practice. Usually your workflow will not be like this one, like git add everything. You usually work with branches and issues and that kind of stuff, but git will be for another talk. Now I'm going to say git commit and this is going to be base files for website. And I'm going to say git push is probably going to ask for my credentials. I need the GitHub one. I'm going to paste this in here. And this is uploading all the files to GitHub. So if I go to my repository, you will see that at the beginning, we just had the gitignore license readme. I changed everything on my computer. I say git push, push. it sent everything. And now if I refresh this, it has everything here. Now we need to go to settings and in settings, we are going to pages and in pages, GitHub pages is not activated. So I'm going to say, this is going to take everything from my main branch. If you are an advanced Git user, you can use another branch. And also you need to change this because remember that I told you that GitHub is going to look into the docs folder. We had a docs folder, we just uploaded. GitHub is not going to build everything from our R markdown files. It's going to build everything from the HTML files that are located on docs. So I'm going to select this and save. And now that I save this, I have an URL. So I have the routing. This is going to take a couple of minutes because now GitHub is building everything on the under the hood. So and I'm going to share this with you in the in the chat. 
I'm going to put later the slides over here and we are going to wait a couple of minutes till this is done. Yeah, that's everything over there. I don't know if anyone has like one question before we wait for GitHub to build this. And you believe me that this is going to work. Now we have the site and you can check this. I'm going to send you this over there. You will see that if you go to the EDA Iris, you have the plot you can source. And this is all the process of the basics on how to create a web page for technical and scientific communication. Uh, thank you very much to everyone for listening, for participating. If you have any question, uh, you can send me a message. I will be more than happy to, to help you. And I can open the space for someone if you have a question. Okay, if not, thank you very much to, to everyone and see you the next time in the next talk of the Edmonton R user group.